The Council for Quality Growth is Metro Atlanta's leading advocate for responsible development. Our region will welcome nearly 3 million people over the next three decades. Only the Council will work on behalf of the development industry to collaborate with elected officials and government staff to ensure that Metro Atlanta thrives. The Council remains the only organization that works exclusively for the development industry, serving at the intersection of public policy and private investment. We invite you to become involved today. Well, good morning, everyone. Appreciate you all being here. Great to be in Douglas County. I'm Michael Paris, and I'm President and CEO of the Council for Quality Growth, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to the 2021 State of Douglasville and Douglas County Address. We have a great crowd here. Some of you here in person, welcome, and folks online, we welcome you as well. So we love being here in Douglas County where your communities continue to grow and thrive. A lot is happening around here, a lot is happening in the metro region, and the Council for Quality Growth is proud to support that growth. So first, I'd like to thank our partners, the Douglas County Chamber of Commerce, the City of Douglasville, and Douglas County, and especially want to congratulate and thank Elevate uh, Douglas, a newly formed partnership, economic partnership, and Chris Pumphrey and his staff, they're doing a great job, and we really appreciate your support, and you'll hear from them later today as they are a, one of our presenting sponsors. These partners are essential to our ability to host these events, and I want to thank all of you for that support in making this one so successful. And I want to thank Sarah Ray, the Mayor, Mayor Robinson, and Chair Jackson Jones and their staff uh, on all sides, everybody who's contributed to make this a great day. So let's give them all a round of applause. So, uh, so today is the fifth of our eight State of the County addresses, which we have hosted or will host in 2021. And we value the opportunity to bring together the public sector with the business community in this way for the county commission chairs and our mayors across the metro region to speak to all of us. The upcoming dates uh, are on the screen. For those, uh, for those of you online, you'll see it online. Uh, we have the State of Beltline on May uh, 19th. We have the state of Henry on May 20th, and I'd like to welcome Chairwoman Carlotta Harrell, who is here from Henry. Welcome to Douglas County. And like you, we've adapted to safe hybrid events just like this one today. The state of Beltline is fully virtual. The state of Henry, Henry will have limited in-person, and it will be virtual as well. And uh, in Henry, we got a treat because the chairwoman has arranged for us to go to the Atlanta Motor Speedway for that event, so we're excited about that one. They're all going to sell out, so make sure you register for those, we ex and we expect to schedule State of Fulton and State of uh, Marta in, in the near future, so keep an eye out for those. So the count to the metro community in connecting the public and private sectors now for 36 years. Douglas County is one of our proud partners and Douglas is growing and changing and thriving and we'll be here at all times to convene the public and private uh, investors and to be involved in the conversations that ensure this hot spot in Atlanta is prepared for the projected growth and economic development that's, that is continuing to come this way. So if you're developing or you're working in the development industry in the region, we urge you to call on the council to be your voice to help us with local ordinances and regulations and other issues that affects your company's ability to do business and help the economic development across the region. Our reach, our reach does not stop at the city or county lines and your business doesn't have to either. So contact us for more information or for or visiting our website at councilforqualitygrowth.org. And if you're watching virtually, be sure to look around the, the website and get involved because those virtual are looking right at our website, so that's great. So we cannot serve our members at this high level without the support of leaders like Chair Jackson Jones, Mayor Robinson, and many other elected and appointed fish officials here today. So could I ask all of our elected and appointed officials to please stand and let us recognize you and, and, and thank you for your service.
And we also are pleased to have uh, members of uh, 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 Senator Ossoff's staff and, and Senator Warnock's staff to join us here today. Y'all please stand and let us recognize you. Thank you for being with us today. We look forward to strengthening our efforts here in Douglas and working with Chairman Jackson Jones and Mayor Robinson, the entire commission, the county staff, and the local business community. So now, I'd like to ask you all to stand as the Alexander High School Color Guard presents the colors and Georgiana Arnold sings the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. Thank you, Georgiana. That was wonderful. Now, please uh, welcome Metro North Region Director for Georgia Power and the Chairman of the Council for Quality Growth uh, Board, Doug Jenkins. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Good afternoon. On behalf of the council, I'm glad to be here in thriving Douglasville and Douglas County, especially since my name is Doug. Say that three times in a row. Um, before we move on with our program, if you don't mind bowing your head for a, for, with me just for a moment, um, we'll have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, thank you for the continued health and safety of the individuals in this room. Please keep your protection on the many families represented here today as we work to move past the pandemic that has gripped our communities. I also ask for a special blessing on the many healthcare workers and first responders that are represented here today that have worked so hard over the last year to help the families in Douglas County that were in need. Thank you for the many leaders in this room today who tirelessly give of their time and resources to help their businesses, employees and communities grow and prosper. Give them the wisdom and guidance to make the decisions that will continue to make Douglas County a great place to live and work for the 150,000 people that call this home. We humbly thank you for this meal before us. May it provide nourishment to our bodies as we continue to serve you. I pray all of these things in your almighty name, amen. You know, Michael is exactly right. The council has been very busy this year working throughout the region on quality growth. 
and we're excited for this city and county, and we look forward to working with Sarah and Chris Pumphrey on Elevate Douglas, a very exciting new initiative here, along with public officials on that growth. Before we recognize our sponsors, I also have the pleasure of sharing with you what I hope you have already read about in the news. This year, the council will be honoring Ambassador Andrew Young with a four pillar tribute. We don't have to tell you what an honor it is to pay tribute to a man who's influenced this nation, human rights efforts worldwide, and changed our very own Atlanta for good. We hope you'll join us for the four pillar this year. And, and please, if, you'll, if you don't mind getting all the details on fourpillartribute.com. Now, this program would not be possible without the support of our sponsors. And I wanna take a minute to thank each of them. Our presenting sponsors today are Atlas and Elevate Douglas. Our resource sponsors are the Metropolitan North Georgia Water Planning District and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Our silver sponsors are Denise, H.J. Russell, and Truist. And our bronze sponsors are Georgia Power, GFL Environmental, Kaiser Permanente, Paulson Mitchell, Stantec, and United Consulting. Please join me in giving these folks a round of applause for, for all that they've done for this program. We thank each of them for, for their support. I would now like to invite one of our presenting sponsors up. Please welcome Communications Director, Carlene Barron, on behalf of Atlas. Come on up, Carlene. Good afternoon. It is so lovely to be here and to see faces, and after what we've come through, it's great to see smiling faces even under the mask, so thankful. Chair Jackson Jones, Mayor Robinson, elected and appointed officials, on behalf of the 3,300 Atlas employees nationwide, welcome. Those who are here in the auditorium and those who are watching online, a hearty welcome to you. We are so thankful for each of you and that each of you are healthy, and you're able to continue doing this important work that allows this county to grow and to thrive. It's because of your vision and your leadership why even during a pandemic, you've been able to be prosperous. In a year that has taught us lessons on resilience and inclusivity, the importance of strong communities, Atlas is proud to be a part of your team providing the services that keep residents of Douglas County safe and healthy and thriving. We are a nationwide testing and inspection, engineering and design and program management company, but we believe in and we are committed to our communities. The communities in which we live and work and play and the communities that make up this vibrant county. So we are grateful for the opportunity and we continue to be grateful for the opportunity to work with you in the years to come. And we look forward to continued providing you excellence. Thank you, Douglas County, for all you do for this metro region and all you do for this state. Continue to stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us here today for our annual State of Douglasville and Douglas County. I am Sarah Ray, the President and CEO of the Douglas County Chamber. And I just have to say, it's so nice to see a full room of people and that we're able to gather in person in a safe environment and then allow our friends virtually to participate as well. So it's just very happy to have you all here in our community today. While I have the stage, I would like to recognize a few of our outstanding partners here in Douglasville and Douglas County. First, I would like to recognize our Chamber Board of Directors. If you are um, present in person today, if you could please stand and be recognized. <laughs> I, don't think the, I don't think our board members were paying attention. <laughs> 
Um, hey, I'm talking to y'all. Um, okay, I also want to recognize a special group um, in the middle of the room today. It's our Cornerstone members. They're our top level investors here with the chamber and believe kind of in our mission and, and all the things that we do. So I would like for our Cornerstone members that are here present in person today to please stand and be recognized as a group. Yeah, I got that one. <laughs> Thank you. I also want to give special recognition to Greystone Power today. They're typically our luncheon sponsor, and they have graciously offered to share that space with the Council for Quality and Growth in our state of the city and county today. So thank you guys so much for, for your sponsorship. Next in our program, we'll hear from the Metropolitan North Georgia Planning District, who has an important message about the efforts across the region to inform leaders and businesses on how conservation efforts are taking place in their communities. As we all know, good water conservation and infrastructure investment is critical to quality growth. I would like to welcome the Water Planning District's Director, Katherine Zitch, to join us virtually. Hello, I'm Katherine Zitch director of the Metropolitan North Georgia Water Planning District. I'm truly appreciative of the opportunity to sponsor this event and especially thank the county leaders for making sure that we have dependable, safe, clean drinking water. As in years past, I'm here to talk to you about something near and dear to my heart. No, not Supreme Court cases, though there is an update. No, not lake levels, though it is raining. I'm here to talk to you about water professionals. Most people don't think about water every day. But know that no matter the time of day or course of world events, water professionals are working in the background 24 seven to make sure we all have access to this important asset for our community. From lake to tap, our essential water workers are operating these important systems to make sure we have water in our everyday lives. I'm Patrick Calhoun, I'm a class one operator. We take water from Lake Alatoona, we pump it here, we treat it, and we send it out to Cobb County as clean, safe drinking water. My name is Deja Moore. I'm the water lab supervisor for Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority. Uh, here in the lab we take samples from the raw and finished drinking water uh, to test for a variety of different water quality parameters as well as bacteriological testing. That is just to make sure that the, the water is safe to drink. My name is Jonathan Drake. Um, I am a transmission operator. We have about 2200 valves in our system and the goal for us is to, to touch every valve in a two year period. And if we find valves that have issues, we repair them. At the onset of the COVID pandemic, people were hoarding toilet paper, but little thought was given to the water necessary to flush it. Similarly, washing hands rose in the public consciousness. Please wash your hands for 20 seconds, but very few people thought about the water necessary to do so. Simply put, the availability of a clean and safe water supply is not on the top of everybody's mind. The water supply professionals that operate these complex systems rarely come to mind as everyday heroes. But few of us could argue the critical nature of the services they provide, during a pandemic or otherwise. In the water industry, we don't have the luxury to be able to, to shut down. Um, you know, people need water 24-7, 365. If, if we went home, shut the doors, Nobody's going to have water. You know, I knew what I did was important, uh, but it wasn't until, you know, the start of the coronavirus that you really thought of it, you know, like, wow, I, you know, I am essential to society. Help us create greater awareness of the value of our water systems. When I was a kid, I knew that water came out of the tap, and that was it. People don't pay attention to the concept of the water because it's always been there. So next time you turn on the tap to wash your hands or flush that hoarded toilet paper, make sure you think about our everyday water heroes that are so imperative to the health and vitality of our communities. Thank you. Thank you to Catherine and all of the water professionals continuing to provide their essential service and critical water to our communities. Now please welcome me in, present, in welcoming our next presenting sponsor, a professional and personal friend of mine, we might be known as partners in crime some places, um, who is dedicated to this community and carrying Douglas towards, a strong, towards strong growth. Please welcome the president of Elevate Douglas Economic Partnership, Mr. Chris Pumphrey.
get to the mic, get to take your mask off. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Elevate Douglas Economic Partnership, as mentioned, my name is Chris Pumphrey, president um, of, the, of the organization. We are extremely proud uh, to be presenting sponsors of today's city, state of the city and state of the county address. Um, by our mayor and commission chairwoman. Uh, we're grateful for their leadership uh, and the council and the board of commissioners for all you do to make this a great place to do business, to live, uh, and to thrive. Uh, we are a newly formed public-private partnership focused on community and economic development. Um, our investors to date include Greystone Power, Georgia Power, Douglasville, Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority, the Development Authority of Douglas County, the City of Douglasville Development Authority, PO Solutions, and many more to come. And so we are looking to uh, build out this public-private partnership as a, as a collaboration between the Economic Development Authority and the Chamber, all under one roof, focused on a thriving and sustainable local economy economy. Um, we are on the front lines promoting the attributes of this great community and working with partners like you all to create this uh, sustainable, thriving economy. So uh, before you leave, if you haven't done so already, we've got some wonderful market reports outside on the table really telling you all about the great things that are happening. Uh, from an investment perspective right here in the community. We're highlighting our schools. We're highlighting this collaboration. We're highlighting the great things that are happening in the downtown. And then some of the things that you will hear from today's address. Um, so grab one of those and also go to our website, elevatedouglas.com for more information. And we look forward to partnering with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. It's now my honor to introduce the first of today's keynote speakers. Mayor Rochelle Robinson was elected the mayor of the city of Douglasville in Douglasville, Georgia in 2015 in a hotly contested race to become the first African-American female mayor in the city's 140-year history. She was reelected in 2019 with no opposition to begin her second term in office. Mayor Robinson received her education from Youngstown State University and the University of Maryland. She is a veteran of the United States Army National Guard and professionally has worked in a federal, state, and local governments to include a commendable stint with the CIA in Washington, D.C. In addition, in Georgia, in addition to serving as mayor, um, Mayor Robinson has worked for the Clayton County Mental Health um, and served on Douglasville City Council a couple of years ago. Uh, she has held several appointments to boards, authorities, organizations, and clubs. Mayor Robinson also received her ministerial ordination um, from the Church of God Ministries in 2009. Mayor Robinson has received numerous awards for her community service and is a recipient of the, pres of the President Barack Obama Presidential Volunteer Service Award and Lifetime Achievement Awards. Mayor Robinson is, has been happily married to Reverend Jeff Robinson for 25 years, and they have three beautiful children. Please help me welcome Mayor Rochelle Robinson. Thank you so much, Sarah Bean. It's such a blessing to be here. I look to the hills with come my help, and my help comes from the Lord. You know I'm a preacher too, so I have to remember my audience. But thank you all so much. It's such a blessing to be here. And we welcome you to Douglasville and Douglas County. While you're here, go stop at Arbor Place Mall and help you know the economy. But we're very excited to be here. I'd like to first um, thank the chamber and the Council for Quality Growth and all the sponsors that are here today. We really appreciate your support. Um, the folks that are listening uh, virtually, and especially the ones that are here today, thank you for taking the time out to come and be with us. We really appreciate that, and we're so very excited. Um, Elevate Douglas, thank you so much, Chris, and he is like a little big brother to me. We really appreciate him and the relationship that we have. All of the elected officials, thank you. Chairwoman, you're trying to get us in Henry County, taking them on a ride. It's not fair. No, it's so exciting to see you. Thank you so very much for coming and uh, all the appointed officials as well. I saw the new fire chief for Douglas County in here, and I believe my chief, uh, chief of police is back there as well, Chief Sparks. But I wanted to recognize my um, colleagues that are give me the air to continue to lift and do the things that we all do together. And if when I announce you, please stand, and if you all will hold your applause until the end, um, I would appreciate that. First of all, we have the Mayor Pro Tem, um, who is the council member for Arbor Place in that area, Terry Miller, Council Member Terry Miller. 
Um, Nicole Miller, we call them Miller T and Miller N. Nicole Miller, <laughs> she is a representative for downtown area along with council member Mark Adams. Um, council Ward 3, council member Samuel Davis, you've seen him on TV, in the newspaper, hand holding signs, vaccines here at Tito's Lounge. Council member Samuel Davis in the north side of town, um, who he serves with council member Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. And uh, the ones that are uh, not able to be here but are on virtually is a tributary council member, Howard Estes, and I think that's it. Oh, and the coach, I can never leave out the coach, Coach Chris Watts, who serves in uh, Chapel Hills area, Presley Mill and all, the, that, all of that area. So thank you so much, team. Let's give them a hand. Thank you so much for coming. I also like to thank my partner in crime, my Thelma and Louise and Ruth and Naomi, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones and the Board of Commissioners for all of their continued collaborative support that we have in the community. We are not an island, the city is in the county, you know. We have to continue to remind people of that. So we need to work together. Uh, the Board of um, um, Education with the superintendent Trent North, we appreciate them as well. So although we've had many challenges in 2020, we are here to look at each other and not be looked down on because we're not on our cooling bed. So we just thank God and we thank everyone, all the uh, medical supporters and uh, epidemiologists and all these terms that we didn't understand, social distancing and washing hands and ma wearing a mask and trying to match your mask with your outfits. And so it's a blessing to be here in 2021 and we've survived 2020. But the city never shut down. We continue to move and we have great milestones that I'll share with you today. We've been able to achieve this by working with our community partners, partners like the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, the Economic Development Authority, Elevate Douglas, Douglas County School Systems, and of course our partners, the citizens of Douglasville in our community. Today I'd like to just share a few minutes from the city and navigate, tell you about the challenges that we had to navigate in 2020 and some of our major problems Product, uh, projects, but we're still diligently working over this year and continuing to move forward, even in the midst of a public um, pandemic. But you know we're excited and we thank you for your patience again. So I'm going to jump right into the report, our public safety, you know, responsibility for fiscal and public Safety are always among our top priorities in the city. As I said, my chief of police, Chief Gary Sparks, who's a stellar award-winning chief, he is, um, he really practices what he teaches and of course, the Aaron's beard, the oil falls from the top of the head all the way down. So the entire Douglasville Police Department really is uh, compassionate and we have a relationship with the community. He has a DCOPS program where he goes inside of communities and talks to um, the individuals that live there. Those police officers that are in that ward and in that zone make themselves known to the citizens. They give them cards, they meet with them and we really, really appreciate that. Safety is at the forefront and can, we cannot have great amenities in a great city without good safety. With the quarantines and shutdowns and shelter in place orders, we saw a pretty significant drop in some of our crime in 2020. Um, reports that were written, written were 10% of a decrease. Accidental reports were 15% down. Traffic stops, 37%. And citations, 40%. I hope this trend continues even after COVID that we have less crime in the city. So we are, we're proud of our police department. We thank the chief for Youth Against Violence that he received a National Chiefs Award um, from National Chiefs of Police. And we thank, um, we just thank him and all of the things that he does, you know, that they continue to do and for uh, Youth Against Violence and all of the things in the community. Feeding the Hungry, they just had a feeding drive, I think, um, at the police municipal building yesterday. So we thank he and Deputy Chief Sue Ann Shaw. So we'll jump right into money. Our director, Karen Callen, keeps all the pennies together and nickels and dimes so that we'll stay on top of things. This is key to a community stability, is a balanced budget. I'm, I'm so happy that Karen keeps track of the budget because like me, you know, my husband has to, he tries to keep track of me. So I don't really know what's going out. I just know what's coming in and what I spend. But Karen keeps us on task. Our city staff works very hard to ensure we're making 
um, efficient and impactful uses of our financial resources. Um, our budget last year, we were able to pay off debt for fire station number 10, which is right here in the downtown area, Alice Hawthorne Center at Jesse Davis Park, and we're, um, also we received $1.7 million in CARES Act funding to cover expenses as relates to the public safety COVID-19 to reduce our use of fund balances. But we are still thankful to have a healthy reserve fund and we were able to maintain the city services in all the operations during 2020. The government Finance Officers Association of Standards recommends that a city maintain a reserve fund balance um, equal to three months of operating cost. As of June 2020, our reserve balance was $15.3 million, and that was approximately five months of operating cost. Now, we have a sergeant. Her name is Marsha Hampton, our city manager. She makes certain that she talks to directors and squeezes everyone together to keep us right on task and to be fiscally responsible. And with this economic challenges of the past year, we did have to use some of those reserve funds. However, CARES Act, as I said, um, we had some of that and it helped us reduce that figure. So we appropriated $2.5 million of our reserve funds to ensure continued delivery and services to our citizens. Of course, we were missing money from hotel motel tax and all of those things and spending. People had to shelter in place, but um, we did receive some resources back. And currently, our fund balance is 12.8 million and which is 24 percent above the required minimum that um, the association of governmental finance officers recommend that we have in case of emergencies again this is a healthy fund balance that's important to maintaining stability during challenges and economic times in case of emergency or anything else that comes up that might be catastrophic that we didn't think about as such like as a pandemic so we'll move on now to major projects to give you a quick update about infrastructure in the city and improvements. As always, resurfacing is important throughout the city. I, that is one thing that citizens recognize and they know and they can see with their eyes is when their streets are resurfaced. And it really does help economic um, sustainability as well because when people come into the community to go shop at Arbor Place Mall or Ross or some of those other stores, you don't want your tires to fall into a pothole. So we love to resurface in the city of Douglasville. We have resurfaced major streets, including Doug Douglas Boulevard, which is the street that Arbor Play Small is on, and to date, the city, citywide, we've seen 191 streets resurfaced since 2016 splossed. So citizens, your penny is at work, and when you spend money at Walmart and all those places, you give back to the pot to help us resurface streets. So continuing with infrastructure improvements, um, Highway 92, woo! -hoo! That's a long time coming, but a change is going to come, as Sam Cook could say. Um, as you all know, this has been a project that's been on for a very long time with construction starting in 2014. But I'm excited to say that motorists on Highway 92 should be able to drive under the railroad tracks and on Veterans Memorial Highway by early summer. This project should be fully completed by fall of this year. Can we just give a hand for Highway 92? <laughs> and we want to thank uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation and um, Commissioner McMurray for all of his support and help in helping us with Highway 92. Then we have the Gateway Beautification Project. I'm very elated to talk about that, that interchange off of I-20 and Highway 92. If you've come in on that stretch of I-20, you would notice that there are some poles standing up there, and so there are lights to illuminate that area, but we have new landscaping along the ramps of I-20 and Fairburn Road. They have been completed, and we're continuing with our ramps, as the county is as well. Madam Chair will talk about that. But those improvements will include a new gate way sign, beautiful signage, and um, it's going to be designated in our wayfinding signage plan. So we have signs that are going to tell you how to get all over the city, how to go to West Pines to play some golf, how to shop, come downtown and eat at Gabe's or Gumbo's, lots and lots of things. So we're very um, happy about that. So our parks director will move on to improvements in our parks. 
Uh, the parks director, Travis Landrum, uh, has come in and he's just knocked everything down. He's like Samson. He's just he's making certain that everything is great. And so um, as of 2016 SPLOS, we dedicated as a city to renovate and improve our community parks because during this pandemic, we realized that so many people were going to the parks, walking, riding bikes, and they've been really um, innovative in their thinking to do make new amenities with uh, frisbee golf and all types of games for uh, community partners to come in with their children and families to go and play and I was trying to walk almost every day and it's, it's really nice to see the ducks and slow down but the parks look great and we appreciate that and and we um, completed our first neighborhood park which is renovated in Mill Village um, a community where it's a neighborhood park beautiful red jumpy, bouncy things, and all kinds of nice um, amenities over there. And we broke, broke ground on another community neighborhood park this past Monday, Willing Workers Park. But if you would go to um, our park off of Chapel Hill, which is Fowler Field, to play soccer, Hunter Park, to tennis, and all kinds of things, uh, baseball and all of that. So we're excited about all of those amenities. We do have um, additional trails new seating areas, improved pavilions, and playgrounds at Mill Village. And at Willing Workers, we're going to uh, start with all the renovations there, as I've said. And Jesse Davis renovations are now in the design uh, phase. And Alice Hawthorne for the Hawthorne Center, those renovations are 100% complete. So when uh, students and families come back, they can play basketball over there and have a lot of amenities. So we are gonna move to our award-winning West Pines Golf Course. I'm not, if you are a golfer, you definitely know about West Pines. Uh, we have received several awards. It's a great amenity to have that green space in our downtown area of the city of Douglasville. And uh, again, Mr. Uh, Landrum helps to keep us on target with that. We have a great golf pro, Chris Cartwright, who was on the Golf Channel, and we're just excited about that as well. And we've noticed an uptick in golfing because it was one of those things that you could do during the pandemic where you're sitting in your cart. We have these new golf carts that are, you can watch ESPN or something else while you're playing. It's, it's really, really nice. And um, that I can't remember what the name of that thing is, where you have to practice your swing before you go out there. So I was happy about that. But performing uh, training facility. There you go, it's performing training facility. That's what is, that was open in 2020. And this is a great amenity for public golf courses, our citizens. The West Pine staff has done an excellent job during the pandemic adjusting their practices and instituting new measures that allow the course to have one of the most successful years ever. We've been doing a lot of renovations on the course, and the course is really nice. Um, so West Pines also hosted the first PGA tournament in July, and the West Pines Classic was a huge success, and we look forward to making it an annual event. So PGA of Georgia is coming back to West Pines, so that shows you, you know, an indication of how great that course is. Um, and so we'll move back into uh, Mr. Landrum and the entire parks team. We have a CAPRA accreditation. Our Parks Department completed this rigorous process of CAPRA accreditation in October of 2020. This is a huge achievement, marking our Parks and Recreation Department as one of the top park programs in the United States. Over the last year, the Parks Department continued to improve and provide services and activities for the community in a safe and innovative way, as I've said. Um, we are also pleased to be able to partner with Cobb Douglas Public Health to utilize Hunter Park to be a testing site during COVID-19 testing. And we um, have opened the park up for feed the community with different fraternities and sororities that come and pass out food along with the police department. So we appreciate Mr. Landrum and the whole entire parks team making things um, open so that the citizens can enjoy the area and also do service projects for community service projects. So now we'll move on to economic development and projects. I hope I'm not boring you. We um, have some great projects underway. We've talked about the city's accomplishments internally as it relates to our fiscal responsibility and safe community and quality of life, but now there are, we're laying the foundation to attract great economic development projects. 
And in 2020, we completed some projects that just helped us to reach major milestones. And we've even adopted some new plans to continue moving the city forward in 2021 and beyond. So in 2020, the city of Douglasville implemented a tax allocation district. And I was on uh, city council, Sarah said, a few couple years ago, I was on city council in 2002 through 2006. We could not get a TAD passed. We tried several times. Um, when I was appointed to different boards, we were always supporting, trying to say, get a TAD in the community. And we were nervous about it, but the citizens supported it. We voted on it, and we now have a TAD. And this tax allocation district would be critical in the redevelopment tool for areas such as our Town Green project at the old mill, um, old jail site and the old mill site. So we have some exciting things coming. I'll tell you about the town green and then jump on the old mill and we're gonna wrap things up. So the town green is inclusive of an amphitheater. Uh, the construction documents will be 100% complete by the end of this month and we anticipate bid solicitation by early summer. So um, we're excited about that, that development I'm mean, uh, excited to announce that today that we're working with Mill Creek Residential to build a mixed use development in the area surrounding the town green with spaces for residential, retail, restaurants, and amenities. If you know some of Mill, Mill Creek's residential uh, projects, there are some in Buckhead, on the Beltline, and Decatur. So we're very, very excited to have them come and put those amenities in our town green uh, with our amphitheater, so that's really exciting. I can't wait to hear those concerts. We visited several cities as a council, the mayor and the council members, we went to Woodstock and um, Sugar Loaf and all around the city, to, uh, all around the, the region to see other cities, uh, Duluth, and, uh, and so we're modeling those, some of those cities to have that amphitheater in um, our town green. So we're excited about this new development, and this new development will add to the growing TAD revenue. So the old mill, woo, it's all these old things. I don't even know it's like a theme, old, I'm, like my kids tell me, but the old mill site cleanup is completed. We are currently working on putting out a bid for a developer to bring some exciting new projects to this site, as well as uh, become a new gateway area for the city at the crossroads of Veterans Memorial Highway and the newly relocated Highway 92. So when you come under the bridge, there's an old mill there that uh, burned several years ago. The city has purchased it. It's all completed. All the EPD and all of those standards have been met, and we're looking at um, how to clean, um, have that bid out and I'm excited about development that would go there. We've talked about several things, a container village, um, a tech hub, a shared space for entrepreneurs. So we're just looking and, and excited about what that site could, um, could be. Now this year we entered into a partnership with Bang Energy to move into the Couric building uh, that will bring 600 jobs and invest $145 million to the city. We're excited about starting this partnership with Bang Energy. I did not know what Bang Energy was. My kids had to tell me that it's kind of like, I don't know, five hour stay awake drink or something. But they have all these names. I, was gonna, I wasn't gonna say crazy. They have these innovative names, very creative names that Bang Energy um, has and, and my kids know all about it. Pray for me now, I have an 18 year old, a 20 year old and the boy is 22. Pray my strength, it's a lot. So my husband and I, it's like herding cats when they're, they're all in college, but they're, we look forward to them coming home in a little bit. But Bang Energy, the kids are excited about that. They want a something cookout or something, Chris. You know what that is? You all know what a cookout is? Did you all know what cookout is? Yeah, we need a cookout, man. That's what my, bu my buddy said. Okay, and my son said, Mom, we need a cookout. And in recent announcement, Microsoft will be setting up their East um, U.S. third data center region in Georgia with a large presence in Douglasville. So we're proud to welcome Microsoft as a new community partner as well. I'm going to go through some new businesses and talk about a couple of other things and then uh, you will hear from the distinguished Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones. Um, our new businesses, we've had many new businesses that have opened up the past year even amidst the um, pandemic. One, one of my favorites, I shouldn't be naming things, but the uh, Navy Federal Credit Union as a 
as a, a veteran, I'm excited about them coming. We've also had additional multiple chains established as well as locally owned and operated businesses, including two new restaurants in the downtown area, Broad Street Station, which is where the old um, Irish Bread Pub was located, not very far from here, and Grits Brunch Bar. Grits Brunch Bar, I think that's gonna be pretty good, grits and um, shrimp or something. In addition to that progress, we have made um, other projects in 2020. The city adopted several new plans that are now in early stages of implementation. And these are including, but not exclusively, many, many more than this, but the North Side uh, Trail Study, which will help bring walkability trails connecting um, neighborhood parks and the new Horizons community. We have a great bike and pedestrian um, plan that we're bringing to connect all of the areas into the city. We don't wanna have silos where you say, I live on the north side, I live in Chapel Hills, I live, we all, we wanna come together and have everyone walk and be healthier with bike and pedestrian trails. Um, the Fairburn Road Improvement Plan, if you've driven down Fairburn, if you got off at I-20 and you've taken Fairburn to come in here, it looks, it looks a little sleepy like me sometimes when, you know, when you get old and you have to kind of watch when you get out the bed and put some packs on your eyes. So Fairburn needs a facelift. I might need one too, but I, I can't do it right now. But anyway, Fairburn Road needs a facelift and we're going to give it to them. Um, it's improved and revitalized Fairburn Road area to wake up Highway 92 relocation and coordinate and assist in all this economic vitality that will help to help have that be an economic engine as well, in addition to Chapel Hill um, and the mall. So in Highway 5, lots of our businesses are there as well. So that is what was happening in 2020. And as we go into 2021 and beyond, which we're already here in this first, first quarter, as you can see, we've been very hard at work uh, this past year and this year. And in the midst of COVID-19, we did not slow down. I want to say a special thanks to our city staff um, that has been very Oh gosh, tenacious. We never shut down. We had to, of course, readjust like many cities and counties and have people work virtually and take computers home. The IT department revved up and helped us with that. And all the city services, some of them were limited temporarily or suspended. Uh, we did have a scare in our um, public works department where we had COVID outbreak and the citizens were great when we called and said we can't pick up your trash for a week but we'll be right on it next week so Mr. Greg Roberts uh, my public works director helped us to do that and we appreciate the sanitation team so all the services were coming back and um, including we have return the citizens are going to be so happy to hear this recycling of uh, services were set up to resume May the 3rd and so the city, again, never shut down. I wanted to thank my city council uh, members, my colleagues for supporting me during this time with executive orders that were very difficult to do. Any leader that's here um, understands, especially the elected leader, um, when you have to shut down your city or your, or your county is very difficult. I received phone calls from restaurant owners and they were saying, please don't close, don't have an executive order, don't make a shelter in place. And I had to weigh, you know, the safety of the citizens with economics. And, and it's very difficult to do that at times. And then, you know, I start praying and I said, and Madam Chair and I were talking and she said, well, Mayor, they can't shop or eat if, they, if they're gone, if they're not here. So we really had to do executive orders um, and shelter in place and follow uh, be, even before the governor did it, we did it here in Douglasville, Douglas County. And I thank the city council for supporting me, calling you on the phone and saying, I'm going to do an executive order. Can I have your okay, your nod? We had a consensus. So we appreciate, I appreciate that. So I thank them and I'm very proud of how our community has come together over this past year to take care of each other. We have all played a role in the city's operating successfully and our local businesses adapting again quickly to ever-changing safety guidelines. Our citizens' support with these local businesses and our city government continuing to communicate updated information and relief options to the entire community. Together we endured uh, the challenges in Douglasville again, never stopped moving forward. So through proper planning, citizen support projects and healthy fiscal uh, position, Douglasville is a great place to be. Um, I'd just like to again thank everyone for coming out today and knowing that we are thriving here in the West Metro region in the state of Georgia in our wonderful nation. 
And um, I am proud to serve on the ARC, which brings all of the Metro Atlanta areas, cities, and counties together. I'm gonna put him on the spot. My RLI buddy, I'm the vice chair, he's the chair. Carrie Armstrong, please stand the chair of the board of directors for ARC. You'd wave your hand, Carrie Armstrong. So thank you all again for coming and um, thank you for allowing us to Zoom and do all the things that we had to do to get the information to you. Um, but thank you and welcome to the city of Douglasville. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, um, for your comments today and for leading our great city of Douglasville. At this time, I'd like to introduce our second keynote speaker of the day. Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones serves as the first African-American commission chairman in the history of Douglas County. Shortly after graduating from high school, Dr. Jones followed in the footsteps of her father by joining the U.S. Army for three years. She earned a bachelor's degree from Southern Illinois University, a master's degree from Chapman University, and an educational leadership doctorate from Argosy University. Dr. Jones worked in the healthcare industry for 40 years and has also worked in federal and state government nonprofit and for-profit organizations. So I think she has a pretty well-rounded background. A significant career highlight for her was being amongst the first civil service employees in the nation to coordinate and direct a federally regulated environmental program for the U.S. Navy. Since taking office in 2017, her ventures helped secure $3.3 billion in investments within her first year in office. Under her leadership, Douglas County welcomed a global technology company, Switch, who's here with us today, Mr. Elliott, a $2.5 billion investment that sets the mark as the most significant single capital investment in Georgia's history. Please help me welcoming Dr. Ramona jackson Jones. Good evening. Thank you, Sarah, for that kind introduction. I would like to personally thank the Council for Quality Growth, Douglas County Chamber, and Douglas County Development Authority for hosting this auspicious occasion. Board of Commissioners, County Administrator Sharon Subadan, exec, 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 I can't say it today, executive cabinet, I must not have one. Elected officials, appointed officials, department heads, Douglas County government employees, Douglas County state delegation, and the members, Mayor Robinson and Douglas City Council, Douglasville City Council, Mayor McDougall and the Villa Ricker City, City Council, Mayor Clemens and the Austell City Council. Our Douglas County School Board Chair, Tracy Ruckert Shaw, and the school board members, our stakeholders and our veterans and our clergymen, and most importantly, our remarkable citizens of Douglas County. My message today comes from a place of hope and optimism. And I congratulate each of you on your vital roles in guiding our steps into what the future will demand to overcome the most unprecedented public health care crisis in modern history. Today, I stand before you to deliver my fourth State of the County Address to proclaim the status of a new normal in which none of us were prepared to experience. Together, we are building a recognizable vision that thrives on the prosperity of diversity and differences to represent a symbol of unity as we lead excellence in the state of Georgia. This past year has been tough with an upheaval of social unrest and racial divide leading us all to look within ourselves to address our troubled history and the effect on our present. We must embrace the common thread of liberty, equality, and justice for all as we work together 
to ensure positive change becomes a reality. Douglas County must see its true self, its identity, and only we the people can define our destiny, and we cannot pivot away from our moments because we are resilient overcomers. I pledge no simple answers today to a lethal virus that has resulted in staggering death rates across this nation. A death toll that has exceeded World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, and 9-11, leaving the entire global society perplexed and stressed with an economic impediment comparable to the Great Depression. This past year has confirmed our true strength, thrown our deficiencies into sharp liberation, and has formulated a narrative for, we, for what we, as one unified Douglas, can accomplish in the midst of adversity. A travesty beyond our imagination has taken approximately 575,000 lives across this nation. Over 200 residents have died in Douglas County, making the unthinkable a painful way of, for all of us. Crucial conversations and inconceivable decisions were placed upon us. Do we go to work? Do we stay home? Do we take the chance to lose much needed jobs? We followed the science and the data and shielded ourselves while embracing our weapons of washing our hands, social distancing, and wearing a mask. Together, we activated a robust emergency plan which insulated our senior citizens and vulnerable populations. We became computer savvy in a virtual world and very quickly adjusted to a new way of life to reduce community mutation of an unfamiliar deadly virus. We resolved to brighter days and the hopefulness of tomorrow. I would like to thank my fellow Board of Commissioners for taking courageous legislative action by appropriating $1.5 million of contingency COVID-19 relief funding to support Douglas County Public Health Services with COVID-19 testing, tracing, treatment, and vaccines, in addition to another $1.7 million to assist our residents who are in need of rental assistance, utility assistance, and small business grants. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman, District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson, District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen, and District 4 Commissioner Ann jones Guider, for your tremendous support. Let's give them a hand. They're amazing. <laughs> we are a durable uh, county. Our conviction to adapt and overcome and recover from difficult con uh, conditions exemplifies our unwavering commitment towards excellence. As the daughter of a 50-year small business owner, I know all too well about the challenges and rewards of trying to maintain and sustain in a pandemic. Our small businesses are the heartbeat of our community and they provide opportunities for entrepreneurs to create jobs with greater satisfaction, keeping money close to home and supporting our neighborhoods and communities. Douglas County small businesses have suffered exponentially during this crisis. I would like to publicly, publicly thank Douglas County Chamber President Sarah Ray and her amazing staff for working tirelessly throughout this pandemic to provide information, education, and support to our Douglas County small businesses. Let's give her a hand. She's amazing. 
Our small business owners need us more now than ever before. Therefore, I am urging all of us to shop local and support small businesses here in Douglas County. Better days are ahead. I would be remiss not to thank President Joe Biden and the U.S. Congress and, US, and all our U.S. Senators for the anticipated emergency relief funding forthcoming in the, in the amount of $28 million for Douglas County in COVID relief. Come on. 28 million is, is on its way. COVID-19 recovery. This is a COVID-19 recovery clearinghouse and it is a major victory for Douglas County. The state and local coronavirus fiscal recovery funds, which the National Association of County officials help develop and secure significant resources to strengthen our communities by investing in our small businesses and nonprofits. Vaccine distribution is important, public health and safety and human services, especially for those who are suffering from domestic violence, mental illnesses, and substance use disorders, and much needed infrastructure, including access to broadband. Thank you, President Biden and your entire team. Let's give them a hand. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> our determination is clear by our tolerance to overcome setbacks, and there is no room for politics in a pandemic. We are 150 years strong with a population of over 150,000 residents. And together we secured a 100% on our 2020 census count, shaping the future for Douglas County in the, for the next 10 years. 100, give it up, 100%. Distinguished Douglas County citizens, Thank you for trusting in my leadership. It is with profound pleasure to announce the state of Douglas County government is good. We're good. Our financial position is strong with a favorable AA2 rating and our credit ranking is very high quality with an exceptional light debt burden with a substantial tax base that far exceeds the US median. Our rainy day reserve funds are healthy. Our fiscal policy reform is solid, and we are continuing to double down on reducing county government expenses. In light of our circumstances, the housing market in Douglas County is thriving, and sales are up 7%, with an average sale starting in a, with a base price of $215,000. Growth in our median household income in Douglas County from 2013 to 2018 increased by 21%, outpacing the United States at 1 point, uh, and at 18.5%, and slightly less than Georgia at 22.8%. Our residential and commercial and industrial construction is robust throughout the county and our brand is resonating. And our new gateway signage is in our landscaping and interstate ramps lighting along I-20 declaring Douglas County is open for business. We are open for business, Douglas County. <laughs> I would like to extend special recognition, uh, recognition to our economic development director Executive Director Chris Pumphrey and his team for advancing targeted uh, industry sectors in Douglas County. And as a result, we are reaping the benefits of skyrocketing growth in research and development by 205%, software and IT by 297%, and transportation and logistics grew by 205%. Thank you, Mr. Pumphrey. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Employment growth in Douglas County from 2014 to 2019 increased nearly about 17%, uh, outperforming both the U.S. and Georgia averages. Our young professional residents between the ages of 25 and 44 years 
uh, represent a critical, crucial segment of our workforce, and we need to make sure we keep them in place and sustain them. I am so excited to say that Douglas County has some of the best and brightest public safety and emergency response personnel in the country. Sheriff Tim Pounds and the Sheriff Department deliver, deliver exceptional law and order, and Douglas County's crime rate is at an all-time low. At an all-time low. Thank you, Sheriff Pounds. Fire Chief Jolie Vett and the Fire Department staff provide superior services delivery while addressing fires and medical emergencies. Director Jason Milholland and the Emergency Management Services Division have taken emergency readiness to a whole new level. And with the steady hand of Director Greg Whitaker of E911 Services, it has kept hope alive during this pan pandemic. Our communications director, Rick Martin, and staff is doing an excellent job delivering up to the minute, reporting and educating Douglas County citizens about the precautionary measures of the coronavirus. And our external affairs director, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, has stood on the doorsteps of legislation to ensure Douglas County receives our fair share of CARES Act and recovery relief funding for 2020 and 2021. And I would just like if you could just give my staff a hand, the team, the, the executive cabinet, they've done a great job. <laughs> Douglasville and Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority stepped up and met this virus head on by providing necessary water to maintain hand hygiene throughout the community. Greystone Power and Georgia Power have provided a glimmer of light during our darkest hours during this pandemic, and we are forever grateful. Special thanks to Cobb Douglas Public Health officials and the epidemiologists for your extraordinary efforts with mitigating the virus. By all means, heartfelt thanks to the Douglas County Community Services Board staff for providing and uh, coping mechanisms to bolster the mental health crisis resulting from this lingering pandemic. Last but certainly not least, I extend deep appreciation to our local pharmacies and our local healthcare providers, Wellstar, Douglas, and Tanner Hospitals, our doctors, nurses, and ancillary staff for going above and beyond the call of duty to fight an invisible virus that has changed the landscape of human existence. Despite the pandemic, education is ongoing. Our local colleges continue to, to provide the highest level of education by fostering a bright and promising future for all Douglas County residents. Douglas County School Superintendent Trent North reported a 2020 graduation rate in, at 89.4%, which is ahead of the state average of 83.8% in 2020, and he and his staff deserves a hand. <laughs> All five high schools were named 2021 AP Honor Schools and earned a spot on the U.S. News and World Reports list as best high schools in America for 2020. In 2020, 24 new classrooms opened at Alexander High School and Chapel Hill Middle School, and it opens with the new grades. And then we have a new facility that's opening up right for the central office off of Bankhead Highway, and that's where the new central office is being located. We have a new stadium under construction, and also, last but not least, we have two major significant projects, entailing a performing arts center at Alexander High School and a multi-purpose indoor arena for graduation ceremonies and sporting events with ground breakings scheduled in 2021. Our school system is on the move. Give them a hand. 
Since I've taken office in 2017, we have garnered about 4.8 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars in capital investments added, and we've added 2,000 new jobs. Well, actually 2,000 plus new jobs, with salaries starting about 65,000, which is 56% greater than the county's average salaries. Higher wages, generates greater demand for higher-end housing options, which now evidenced by the vast number of housing projects, both single-family, townhomes, and multifamily projects underway throughout the county. Douglas County's economics uh, engine has continued to produce successful projects with, Medline, with the Medline expansion, FSI, Berlin packaging, and Comptree, and many more. Recently, we've had a grand scale opening to include Stitch Fix with 589 employees. At the close of last year, more than half toward their goals of 981 employees. And of course, Switch, the largest investment, single capital investment in Georgia's history, opened their phase one facility right here in Douglas County at the end of 2020, and let's give them a hand, the largest in Georgia's history. Thank you. This pandemic has not stifled economic development progress in Douglas County. We have inducted Endeavor 3D into our economic engine and started groundbreaking efforts for an 1,100-acre preserved life wellness center underway in the western corridor of the county. This is a very exciting time to live in Douglas County. Bridges are under construction, street lights and traffic lights are being installed in key locations, sidewalks under construction along school zones, intersections being widened, roads are being resurfaced, new trailheads at Clint Park, and much more. Douglasville, Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority is preparing for a massive reservoir expansion. The long-awaited Caps Ferry Sewer Infrastructure Project is currently in progress and under construction. And Wellstar Douglas Hospital has broken ground to build a state-of-the-art pediatric emergency medical uh, facility to enhance the uh, capacity and serve the capacities of our pediatric population here in Douglas County. So that is remarkable. We have a new emergency room coming for our pediatric population here in Douglas County. So let's give Wellstar a hand. <laughs> Douglas County Board of Commissioners announced a couple of groundbreaking projects last year. Uh, partnerships with, we have a partnership with the state and we've been waiting and it's been a long time coming a driver services center here in Douglas County. The Board of Commissioners announced last year and the groundbreaking should start very soon. And thank you so much, Director Worthington, who's leading this project here in Douglas County. And I would ask you to clap, but we'll hold off. I have quite a bit more, which is the DDS. And that is our driver services, so that is worth celebrating. Douglas County also approved a tax allocation district for unincorporated uh, Douglas County in 2020, and the best is yet to come. In 2020, the Board of Commissioners confirmed completion dates for a multitude of SPLOST projects to include the new state-of-the-art Senior Center in Lithia Springs, a new, te new tennis courts at Deer Lick Park, uh, at our E911 countywide radio system, our new fire trucks, ambulances, and firehouses and renovations in state-of-the-art 30,000 square feet, multi-purpose center currently under construction at Boundary Waters, and brand new concession stands and restrooms at Bill Arp and Fair Play Parks. We are, we are moving. Together, we will work to eradicate this unparalleled virus. Meanwhile, we must keep pushing toward the prize of promise until the day of deliverance to promote good development and investment into the county by developers. Our planning and zoning division has undertaken a countywide re-envisioning of the character areas that uh, guide growth and development for the county that includes a welcoming 166 scenic byway project with GDOT, 
that's coming down the pike. In, a t in anticipation of the next five years, there will be several things coming. There will be a small area study to access current and future conditions and growth for Lithia Springs area and also Winston, the Winston area. So we're real excited about that coming up for the Winston community in 2022. In closing, throughout the pandemic, we have confirmed mediocrity is not an option. We have set standards where others may be judged. We were among the first in the state to secure mass sites for COVID-19 testing and vaccine administration. We have no choice but to keep moving forward. This year, I rolled out a four-year step priority plan that includes first and foremost, making sure sufficient COVID-19 vaccines are available to every eligible citizen in Douglas County. Secondly, I will partner with our federal elected officials in Washington, D.C. to secure transportation infrastructure, relief funding for Douglas County to address our aging roads and sidewalk needs within the county. Third, my third priority is to increase services and amenities for our veterans. Most recently, our judicial system launched a veterans court and also the Board of Commissioners have funded the Community Services Board by renovate, with a renovation pro project currently underway to restore 14 apartments to house our homeless veterans. Our veterans need local outpatient medical services. Therefore, I'll be working with the Veterans Administration to determine the possibility. My fourth priority is to release a first ever five year strategic plan in 2021 It'll be cataloged with major goals and objectives based on the citizens' voices, opinions, and ideas while we work in a unified manner to develop a roadmap to enhance present and future endeavors for Douglas County. While this pandemic will one day recede, it is our responsibility to press through to the other side. We cannot return to the status quo of the failures of our past. In the words of poet Amanda Gorman, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it, we found the power to author a new chapter to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we ask, how can we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a county that is bruised, but whole benevolent, but bold. Thank you, Amanda Gorman. Gorman. And I want to just recognize her, and if you could just give her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, we are a resilient, and we are resilient overcomers, and we are standing in the footprints of the past generations. It is our responsibility to seize this moment, to generate lifelong change, most of us understand the danger of the coronavirus, and we are willing to make simplistic sacrifices to protect ourselves and others. Trepidation blocks out hope, kindness, and common sense thinking, traits that we need now more than ever. As we find our way, the principle of hope, justice, and opportunity will channel our paths just in a split second, all of our lives transform, and this pandemic has repositioned our faith. In the midst of these trying times, I have come to terms with the fact God is a redeemer. He takes what is devastating and creates an authentication for us to learn from and share with others. It is incumbent upon all of us to move beyond the division and to embrace diversity for our greater good. 
our destiny is fixed and soothed to the unknown agony of an invisible virus. Together, we have defined the true meaning of resilience. We placed faith over fear, and we are a true testament that tough times never last, but tough people do. We are resilient overcomers, Douglas County, and we don't claim perfection. We just keep getting up when knocked down, and we refuse to break under the ex challenges of extreme pressure. Our sights are fixed and focused on a new tomorrow, a new awakening guiding the principles of our future that will set the tone for those who will succeed us. God bless Douglas County, the state of Georgia, and these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Chairwoman, and thank you, Mayor. The, the, what great messages, what great progress, what great inspiration. We thank you both for everything you've done. Everybody who lives, works, and plays here in, uh, in Douglas County should be grateful. So let's give them both a, another round of applause. We appreciate you all being here today with us in person. Those of you online with us, thank you for being with us. Thank you to our sponsors. We really appreciate your, uh, your, your work in behalf of Douglas County, and thank you for your participation. And, and thank you, Sarah, in the, ch in the Chamber of Commerce, Elevate uh, Douglas. Congratulations on the new endeavor. Uh, we appreciate everything you do.